Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and today I am going to talk about something unusual, and that is about me myself. So now that we have about 550 videos and quite a few playlists, I realize that I've never really introduce myself in a deeper sense. I mean, most people know about me because they read my work or have seen some videos, but I've never really shared my own life story or my own views in one video. So I thought I should just briefly introduce myself. So the name you already know is Masood Raja, and I currently teach at a research university and I teach post-colonial studies. I'm originally from Pakistan, from the Punjab province of Pakistan, from the region of Portohar, right? The major city there is Gujar Khan, and our village is a tiny little village called Chak Bhagwal, right, or Chak Raj Khan. This is one of the four villages that were established by the Nagyal Rajputs in the 16th century. So, my early education, uh, after the eighth grade, I went to a boarding school, which is called Military College Jhelum, MCJ. Historically, this school was established by the British Empire, and it was called King George Royal School. And it was a military farm school, and it still is a military farm school. That means that people who were accepted in the eighth grade after a highly competitive process committed to the institution that they will apply to join the Pakistan Military Academy. That was the commitment you made, and if you decided not to do that, you had to pay some additional fees to the college. So I had my eighth till 10th grade education there, which was a wonderful education. That was the most formative part of my life. I got the best professors, Professor Saeed Rashid. Professor Anuddin Alvi, Professor Mushtaq, these were the traditional, highly educated people who taught us in 8th, ninth, and 10th grade. And then the school was run by the military, so there were some military instructors as well. So after I graduate my, graduated my 10th grade, which we call matriculation in India and Pakistan, I joined the Junior Military Academy, which was then called the Junior Cadet Battalion. And after that, four years of training from 1981, so I go to the boarding school in 1978, I graduate from there in 1981, I immediately joined the junior cadet battalion, and after four years of training, I graduated in 1985 as a second lieutenant, right? And I joined infantry, the Sindh Regiment. And then there, I served for about 10 years, I was deployed in the southern desert, in the Punjab province, in the northern mountains of Pakistan, in the conflict zone, the Siachen Glacier. I was also deployed as part of Pakistan's contingent to the first Gulf War. These are some of my general military experiences. Now, the military was also a deeply formative experience for me. It gave me most of what I am a sense of honor, a sense of dignity, a sense of responsibility, even my reading habit. My battalion was a highly educated battalion, and our superiors encouraged us to read and write. So then, for personal reasons, I left Pakistan Army in 1996. Okay, that is when, and I was then a, a serving major. I was commanding an infantry company. Before that, I had two tenures as an instructor at School of Infantry and Tactics, where I taught weapons as well as tactics. And that is where I realized that teaching was my vocation, and that is what I wanted to do. So after I left Pakistan Army in 1996, I came to United States. I came to city of Nashville and was welcomed and nurtured by Belmont University, the professors as well as the administrators. That is where I learned literature. 
That is where I learned literary studies, but also I learned and adopted the best part of American experience, being generous, being kind, being tolerant, right? All of that came to me from Belmont University, which then was affiliated with Southern Baptist Convention. It no longer is affiliated with them, but it is still a Christian missioned university. And from Belmont, with the support of my teachers, with the support of the institution, they funded part of my education too, so I'm deeply grateful to them. From there, I went to Florida State, FSU. That is where I got my PhD. That is where I learned most of what I know about my field of study. My director was Dr. Robin Goodman. She's still there, one of the most brilliant scholars in the world. Uh, one of the most brilliant feminist scholars, a post-colonialist, and she, along with many others, are the ones who helped me hone my area of expertise, write my dissertation, and develop a career as a scholar. So that is roughly my career as a student. My first job was at Kent State University. I highly recommend that campus. There are people there like Mark Brocker, People like, uh, you know, they're African-American lit scholars, right? They are a great department, especially if you want to do critical pedagogy. And my friend Babakar Embe is the department chair and also an African-American studies scholar, but also an Africanist. And from there in 2010, I came to University of North Texas. And I've been here ever since with my wife who also teaches in the same department. Here I have had the honor and privilege of working with quite a few graduate students who have finished their dissertations with me. And I also was lucky enough to win a $1 million grant to develop a partnership between UNT and National University of Modern Languages in 2013, which I ran for about four years and it was one of the most highly successful programs. The graduates of that program, mostly, most of them have already finished their PhDs. So on a personal note, I am married to Jenny Kaneen Raja, who also has a PhD in Renaissance Studies. We've been married since 2004. We have one dog, four cats, and we are currently in a transition. We have decided to downsize so that's why I haven't been posting much because we had to move the house and I had to go rent an apartment while Jenny, my wife, is in Ohio taking care of her mother and her family. So that's my life story in terms of, you know, where I came from and where I am. In terms of my assumptions about life, you know, my philosophy comes from my own culture, right? It's the philosophy of care and generosity. That is what I teach. That is what I try to practice. That is what I try to encourage. I believe in critical pedagogy. I believe that humanistic education, if rightly conducted, can make us into better people, can make us into people who have an impact in the world and who help other people. So these are some of my principles. Politics, I mean, I guess you can already guess, uh, I am, I believe in progressive politics. I believe in rights of everyone, in absolute equality, essential equality of all human beings. So I believe in essential equality of all human beings. I follow the rules of any nation where I live, but personally I'm a transnationalist. I believe that this planet belongs to everyone and everyone should have access to its resources. And I believe in a kind of world which is generous, in which everyone has a chance to excel and live a dignified life. It doesn't matter where they are from, what their religion is, what their faith is. These are some of my core beliefs. Now in terms of what I write about, I write about neoliberalism, globalization, but also about the possibilities of change, but change in a sense that in which we don't create these binary structures or immutable texts. Change in a way where we are willing to forgive 
and accept something even from strangers if it enables us to do good in the world, if it enables us to do the kind of work that is tolerant, that encourages compassion, that encourages sharing. So these are some of my values. So I know it, this video cannot really be all exhaustive, but that's what I usually think about, talk about, that's who I am. So remember, you know, Masood Raja, whom you see every now and then on this channel. I am originally from a small village in Potwar called Chak Bhagwan, right? And my people are Nagyal Rajputs, right? That is where I come from. That is the area I think of when I think of home. And that is what I am proud of, my own heritage, right? So other than that, I'm a citizen of the world and I love everyone equally and I do not hate anyone. That's all I have to say. Please feel free to send me any other questions or queries that you might have. I will try to answer them. Not very personal questions, but any general questions. I hope this didn't bore you to death. I thought I owed you all this much to at least introduce myself in a little bit of more detail. So that's all. I hope you're staying safe. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And I will now see you next time. Until then, as always, peace and love.